Okay, hello, um, welcome back to another geography video. Today I'll be talking about a case study that I learned in class the other day about Detroit. And this covers the urban environments unit, specifically on deindustrialization. So I'll be essentially talking about the rise and fall of Detroit. Yep, okay. So where's Detroit? Detroit is the largest city in the Midwestern state of Michigan. So you can see from this dot right here, if you don't know where this country is, I have a few questions. Anyways, what is it famous for? This is for contextual knowledge. So, during its heyday, I never knew I'd say that, um, as a thriving manufacturing industry, Detroit was a city characterized by huge economic industrial activity. This city served as a prominent hub for the automobile industry with numerous motor manufacturers operating within, within its boundaries. The streets were filled with factories, producing vehicles that fueled America's transportation needs. So the manufacturing sector provided a multitude of jobs, like super well-paying jobs, and attracting workers from across the country. So in class, we watched this documentary that I will link down, and like every old person there, I'm so sorry, that sounds really mean, like an el elderly person, you know, that was, you know, working while it was thriving, right? Thriving time in Detroit I was like, I was like, I'm so happy to be a Detroit person. I am so happy to work for GM Motors while it was still at its rise. So, you know, you could, you could tell that, you know, it was a, it was such a nice place. I don't know if that makes sense. I am so sorry. It's like 12 to 1 a.m. and I am kind of sick. So just, um, be careful around there. <laughs> and what else is Detroit famous for? Hmm. You guessed it. Mr. Chicka Chicka Slim Shady. Yep. Mr. Real Slim Shady. Um, this was after the rise, though. This is, like, almost about the fall. But, you know, he's also from Detroit, and I thought it would be funny to add it on here. Anyways, so nearly a century ago, the huge, huge growth of the auto industry ignited an expansion, making Detroit the fourth largest city in the United States. That is big. So, like, people wanted to seek employment opportunities at the big three, Ford, General Motors, and Chrysler. I think they have more color companies. It's just, like, these are, like, the big, big three. So, yeah. So by the year 1950, Detroit's population reached its pinnacle at nearly 1.85 million residents. That's a lot because of these three guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about the economy. So in the 1970s, the industry experimented its autom into automation, replacing assembly line positions with machinery, right? Little robots resulting in the loss of tens and thousands of jobs like why would you do that i mean it's convenient but okay the industry faced further contraction due to the energy crisis in 1970s yikes and the economic recession in the 1980s man additionally intense really intense competition from foreign markets led to a significant decline in profits so these foreign markets are mainly, like predominantly, Japanese car manufacturers. Like these six very famous ones, especially these two. Toyota, Honda, Mazda, Subaru, Mitsubishi, and Nissan. So here, I mean, who doesn't want a Toyota Prius or like a Honda Civic, right? <laughs> um, anyways, they were just much more cheaper than what these three guys were offering. So, essentially, as auto jobs relocated to other areas, like, they relocated, these guys, um, relocated to other areas, and the region aged, Detroit experienced a substantial rise in labor costs, particularly in relation to retiree health care expenses. These factors contributed to the challenges faced by Detroit. The, all these financial burdens rising financial burdens. Okay. So, more information. Presently, Detroit stands as a symbol of deindustrialization and kind of urban decay as well. With its infra 
with its infrastructure in a state of disrepair, just derelict, and the city grappling with a staggering $300 million debt deficit in achieving municipal sustainability. Oh my goodness. So, historically, Detroit's economy lacked diversification, heavily relying just on the automobile industry and manufacturing. So, they didn't have much there. They only had cars, just all the automobiles. So, it's strategic location near Canada, as you can see. Wait, let me, yeah, see that? Okay. Near Canada and access to the Great Lakes made it ideal an ideal hub for intensive production. However, factors such as an expansion of like highway systems and globalization and escalating labor costs due to the unionization rendered the city's geography less relevant. See, because of highways, right? Those are so convenient. Just just as time progress, you know, places become more convenient. So, you know, its geography didn't really matter anymore. That is kind of sad. As the big three here as the big three automakers gradually shifted their car production away from greater detroit the city faced a dearth of alternative industries to sustain its economy because they didn't have anything much other than cars it's quite sad so hence this is a prime example of deindustrialization decline in industrial activity in a region or economy very prime Anyways, here are some pictures that you can see. It's really derelict. It's been declining. You can see the decline. See, I assume that this was some kind of theater, movie theater, drama production, school. I'm not really sure. But look at it. It must have been so nice. Like, look at the walls. They're so nice and pink. But it's all, like, gross. No offense. And look at all this. Like, these warehouses and these, like, dead trees. And all these walls, graffiti. This kind of indicates, like, the crime rates, maybe. You know? All these, yeah, graffitis and this random sofa. Some overgrown weed, fauna, fawn. That's sad. And there's even YouTube videos online that you can find that just explains Detroit as the abandoned city. Now, that makes it sound really cool, but... It's not. It's kind of sad. Like, where did the tea go for motor? You know? And it's kind of ironic, too. Anyways, moving on. Right. There's, this is also, pic these are pictures from the 1950s, 1960s-ish. Like, look at all these guys. They look so happy with their hats and newspapers. All these cars look pretty nice. Look shiny. All these ladies rocking their skirts. Nice landscape view. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there's also social issues. Of course there's social issues. There's always social issues. So, population and poverty. Yeah. So about 36% of the city's population is below the poverty level. And in 2010, this is not recent data, so do additional research. The residential vacancy rate was 27.8%. That is really high. That means not a lot of people live in their houses anymore or it's just abandoned. Empty housing. That is very, very sad. Anyways, its unemployment rate is like 23.1%. And, you know, more subs more of your, like, substantial areas of the city are plunged into darkness. Darkness. A significant portion of streetlights, approximately 40%, are, like, non-functional. So these, all gone. Like, imagine walking home in pure darkness. That is scary. That is creepy. Anyways, there's also crime. Crime rates are high in Detroit. With an unsolved crime rate of 70%. And a significant number of people that left the city, like over a million, since its prosperous era in the 1950s, Detroit has now the title. It has a title of being the crime capital of America. The city's downfall can be attributed to a multitude of factors rooted in its geographical circumstances. So, Detroit's alarming crime rate statistics speaks volumes with property crime rates. Please hear me out on this. This is pretty high. 
with property crime rates reaching 62.18 per 1,000 residents and violent crime rates at 16.73 per 1,000 for surpassing the national figures of 32 per 1,000 for property crimes and 5 per 1,000 for violent crimes in 2008. That is very old data too, so careful on that too. So the city's murder rate, oh no, oh no, a really bad word, of 53 per 100,000 in 2012 was 10 times higher than the New York City statistics making detroit the distinct the making detroit the distinction of being named the most dangerous city in the united states for four consecutive years that is that is that is a lot of years so yeah the then you could read the rest the report drew attention to the fbi and yeah it was really sad really really sad so in education, so starting in the 1970s, numerous older American cities experienced a crisis of deindustrialization. Yeah, while some cities such as Minneapolis and Boston and even Philadelphia managed to rebound and undergo urban resurgence. Yeah, Detro Detroit faced distinct challenges. Detroit didn't really strive that way. Um. The success of the big three motor companies unintentionally hindered entrepreneur growth in Detroit. With high assembly line wages, workers had little, little incentive to pursue higher education, limiting the development of an entrepreneurial spirit. So, what I'm essentially trying to say is there wasn't much spark. Not a lot of spark there. So, presently, only 32.4% of Detroit, ad like adults in Detroit possess a college degree compared to the national average of 53.7 percent which is quite a difference and the city struggles with controlling the outflow of talent i do not want to say it like this because it sounds rude but outflow of talent like what like educated individuals i'm so sorry but i'm pretty sure you all know what i am trying to say so that is it. Thank you for watching. This is what I learned in class. So I hope it's useful to you. And I think maybe you can use it for your 10 marker. Or you could use it in your short answer or whatever. Or you can learn from this and say deindustrialization is sad. Thank you for watching. God, I just watched the video and I said Minneapolis. Wait, what did I say? It's Minneapolis. I was re I was reading Persepolis, Minneapolis. What did I say?